I wanted to talk about the 7D Mark II today, not just because I happen to own this camera, but also because I wanted to explore whether it's still a relevant choice for bird and wildlife photography in 2020. that have made the 7D Mark II such a staple for wildlife photographers and bird photographers over the years haven't changed. It's still got that rugged build quality given by its magnesium alloy body. It's still got that fantastic customizable 65 all cross point autofocus and it's still got a wonderful 10 frames per second. But what about image quality? Does it still stack up? And I want to ask a question. Is image quality still important given the advances we've had in the last year or so in post-processing technology. It's 2020 and I don't think we can ignore the fact that these days a DSLR or a mirrorless camera needs to have outstanding video capabilities and unfortunately this is an area that the 7D Mark II just can't compete in. But as a pure stills wildlife camera, an occasional video shooter, I think it's probably still got a lot to offer. And here's why. You can still buy the 7D Mark II new, but I feel as an obsolescent camera near the end of its life, it's probably not a wise investment. I think it's a much better decision to consider it as a used body. And the advantage of these cameras, because they haven't been exclusively used by professional photographers, is that there are a lot of them around with not very high shutter counts. These days, so many of the options out there are mirrorless 35mm full-frame cameras. And while that's really good, there is still something to be said for crop sensor APS sensor cameras. And the reason is effective reach. It's a really vital tool for anyone who's a field photographer, someone who can't control the distance between themselves and their subjects. And so much of the time for birding and wildlife that's the case. And where crop sensor excels is when you bolt it on to the end of a lens like the 100 to 400 or anything longer, it gives you that reach, that additional reach and pixel density on the subject. And this is brilliant, not just because of the reach, but also because of that cropped in view. It's easier to place the autofocus points on the vital parts of that bird or animal its eye. With a full frame camera and that wider field of view, it's not as easy, even where that camera makes up for it in terms of its pixel density. You may feel that just bolting a teleconverter, a 1.4 or 2 times teleconverter on your lens, is just as effective a way of increasing reach. In fact, a more effective way of increasing reach because it actually genuinely does add to focal length on your lens. And that's true. But there are some downsides to that approach. One is a slowing of the focus speed, and that can be important. And two is a general deterioration in image quality. What I like to do is to use my 7D Mark II as a sort of pseudo teleconverter. I can bolt it onto the same lens without the teleconverters, achieve that effective increase in reach, and at the same time, I don't suffer from any loss of light due to the change in f-stop, and I don't suffer from any of the effects of deterioration in lens, image quality, or in focus speed. I've already talked about how important I feel the autofocus system is in a modern wildlife camera. In fact, I think it is probably the most important aspect of any camera you use. Without a shot that's in focus, you, you don't have a shot. Now, the 7D Mark II still has one of the best autofocus systems in the business. It's 65 points, they're all cross points, so higher accuracy points, and it is very customizable. More customizable than, for instance, is Stablemate, the Canon 90D, a much newer camera. So the 7D is still leading the field, in my book, as one of the most affordable cameras with great autofocus. Wildlife and birds move fast, there's no doubt about it, and that's where frames per second come in. Now at 10 frames per second, the 7D Mark II was class leading when it came out all those years ago. Now 
it's a little bit slow, but 10 frames per second is entirely adequate for most bird and wildlife photography. If you need that bleeding edge speed, well, there's other options out there. And the advantage of having that lower frame rate, if there is one, is that at the end of the day, you don't have to spend your time after shooting deleting thousands upon thousands of images. You'll probably still get the shot you need, but you won't have to spend all that time and effort choosing it. If we're talking frames per second, then it's only natural to talk buffer as well. And with 31 raw frames as a buffer, the 7D is no longer at the cutting edge of technology. But it's certainly not bad either. It's certainly better than a lot of other options that are still out there. And that 31 shot buffer is certainly adequate in terms of my own experience to capture pretty much everything you need to. Build quality. I actually think it's so important, particularly in our field of wildlife and bird photography, because let's face it, we take these cameras into some pretty rough and nasty environments. Rain, mud, cold, ice, snow, heat. It does matter. Think about it like this. What happens if you arrive on your trip, a once in a lifetime trip on a safari in Africa, you're on day two, it's fantastic. Maybe it's the migration and suddenly your camera stops working. What do you do? What do you do? It's a developing country. There's no camera fixes around anywhere. There's no camera shops around anywhere. You're stuck. You've got the rest of your holiday and no pictures. That cannot happen. And this is where Canon cameras, in my personal experience, excel. Their build quality is fantastic. It's really good. They're robust, they're well thought out, they're ergonomically sensible, and they're durable, hardworking tools for people like you and me. And this is certainly true of the 7D Mark II because the camera's shutter is rated for 200,000 actuations. That's a huge increase on its nearest rival, in-house rival, the Canon 90D. And if you think about it, if you're coming at this camera from a second-hand perspective, you can go and pick yourself up a nice used example and you'll have a lot of life left in that camera. And this durable build quality will mean that it will last you and won't break down out of warranty. It's a big factor in peace of mind. One of the things that is really nice about buying a second-hand 7D Mark II is the pro features that come with it at a reduced price. Things like dual card slots that you'd normally have to pay extra for. Things like micro focus adjust to adjust your lenses to get the best out of them. Things like the fact that the LP6N battery is still upward compatible with the 5D Mark IV and downward compatible with the 5D Mark III. In fact, your 7D Mark II can even use batteries from those cameras to operate. These are all really nice things to have. And if you think about the fact that you can adjust the time length of the bulb timer, and if you think about the fact that you can adjust metering to, uh, to change it to your own preference, these are all fantastic value adds. And, and if you add to that the fact that these cameras are ergonomically consistent, one of the things that I really value in Canon cameras is that I can pick one body up and it's exactly the same or almost exactly the same as the next body I pick up. And where you like me and you're shooting with more than one camera body, that is such a valuable thing. As well as having consistent menus, you have consistent button placements, consistent form factors and shapes, and your fingers find the right places when they need to. The 7D Mark II only has a 20 megapixel sensor. And while you might feel that's a disadvantage in terms of resolution when you compare it to the much larger 90D sensor, it's not as much as a disadvantage as we might think because that 20 megapixels having larger photo sites on the sensor means that it suffers less in low light, it suffers less from pixel blur, the micro movements you make when holding the camera, and it actually stacks up pretty well. Now, it has to be said, its noise characteristics are not cutting edge. They're not as good as the newer cameras, particularly when you place your subject against a dark and shadowed background. It's going to be difficult for you to bring up those dark areas compared to its modern counterparts. 
But where you're shooting against a brighter background, a sky, an open field, for instance, it's going to make no difference whatsoever. And additionally, something has changed in the last year or so. There's been magnificent advances in machine learning and AI technology. Why is that relevant to the 7D Mark II and any other older cameras? Well, noise is not as big a factor as it used to be, because we can use these software to actually improve our image to a drastic extent. There's a video up there linked. You can find out what I'm talking about. But basically what it's doing is it's giving our older cameras a new lease on life. We don't need that bleeding edge noise technology anymore. We've got it. It's in our software. Okay, there's some things about the 7D Mark II that aren't good. And one of them has to be its price new. If you're considering buying one of these cameras off the shelf new, you really need to think twice. I cringe when I hear people considering that because the camera is obsolescent. It's about to be made redundant and retrenched and it's gonna be worth half as much tomorrow as the price you paid today. Rather just go straight for a second hand one. The price is already down, it's depreciated and you're getting the same options without that risk or expense. Another reason not to consider the 7D Mark II is its video capabilities. When it came out, it had a very respectable 1080 uh, resolution at 60 frames a second. But these days, that's nothing to write home, home about. And even the uh, humble M50, which I'm filming on at the moment, is a far better option if you're a videographer. And certainly the 90D with its uh, touch sensitive tilt screen and 4K video is far better again than the 7D Mark II. So definitely don't consider it if you're thinking about shooting any more than casual video. Right, let's summarize. Is the Canon 7D Mark II still a viable proposition in 2020 as a wildlife camera and as a bird photography camera? I think the answer is most probably yes. And this is why. I think it's got great autofocus, certainly better than its stable mates in the Canon uh, lineup at its equivalent level, things like the 90D. It's got great weather sealing and construction. It's got that high shutter count. It's also got decent frames per second, certainly adequate for my purposes. It's also got a good buffer depth at 31 frames. So for those reasons, I think it's actually got a lot to offer as a wildlife camera. Where it's let down in terms of stills imagery is its image quality is not as bleeding edge and as good as some of its rivals, its modern rivals. But having said that, a lot of the time we can mitigate that with good software. And that certainly is an option today. Finally, where you shouldn't perhaps consider this camera is if you shoot anything more than casual video. It's not got great video features compared to modern equivalents. It doesn't have a touch screen. It doesn't have a tiltable screen. It's basically going to be a hindrance and not a help if you want to shoot serious video. But as a stills camera, it's very much still relevant. I wanna hear your thoughts though. Are you gonna sell your body if you've already got one? Are you gonna keep it? Are you gonna replace it with something else? Uh, do you think if you don't shoot one that you might pick one up? perhaps second hand? Is it something that you might consider still buying new? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.